What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Today I'm going to be going over my Players Cup 4 Qualifier team, or as I should say, my Players Cup 4 Failed to Qualify team. Unfortunately, this time around I didn't qualify, uh, now I'm 2-2 two and two for qualifying for Players Cup. Uh, so, I actually keep a folder of them. Uh, as you can see, uh, my first Players Cup I didn't qualify, I had a rating of 1490. Second Players Cup, I qualified with a rating of 1666. This is my third Players Cup team that I used in the tournament. Uh, Players Cup 3 qualifier, 1666 rating, qualified. Uh, this is my third Players Cup team. And then here is the team that I failed to qualify with. So what I want to do is go over the team and just talk about generally how it functioned and just sort of give like a retrospective on the entire tournament. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this, do me a favor, leave a like in it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content and answer my comment question of the day. What would you change about this team? You know, despite, you know, Absol being on the team at all. So first up, uh, I want to explain why Absol. So Absol isn't necessarily like a super like meta pick, you know, it's not necessarily like something that I was trying to use to counter team anything in particular. However, I do have a tradition with Players Cup qualifiers where I try to use a personal favorite of mine. Players Cup 1 was, uh, was it called Flapple. Players Cup 2 was uh, Thievul and Ndidi. Players Cup 3 was Golisopod. So these guys managed to use my favorite, managed to qualify. These guys I did not. Now, I want to talk about Absol now. Absol, in most ways, is just a straight-up worse Urshifu. When it comes to critting things, Urshifu has a guaranteed crit. Absol does too, but it doesn't do as much. When it comes to speed, it's quite slow. And when it comes to attack, it's as strong as Urshifu, but lacking stab. Really, the only thing it has ur over Urshifu are a few coverage moves and the ability Super Luck. I ended up going with Super Luck as well, however, I just slapped Super Luck on there because I didn't have time to have Justified applied to the Pokemon, and, you know, occasionally a crit would be nice. So I just kind of used Absol as a worse Urshifu, and that goes against my entire team building philosophy, mainly because I've always said, if you're going to use a Pokemon, uh, you really shouldn't use it if it's just a worse version of another thing. You should find a niche that it fits and really, like, exploit that niche. So if we're going to talk about Thievul, it is like the best unburdened user in Psychic Terrain, in the game, at least for the time, because it gets access to Snarl, Foul Play, Beat Up, and Fake Tears, which other unburdened Pokemon don't have access to, so it's able to have multiple modes. So that's what I did with that. Golisopod was an activator for Colossal, however, it was also a way to 1v1 Glacier 100% of the time. You never lose to Glacier with this Pokemon, and it was actually able to sit in on a lot of Pokemon and not even take 50% and get switched out. On top of that, Safety Goggles is a really cool play, since I didn't have to run Focus Sash like most Urshifu players would. So Absol, I just kind of made a worse Urshifu. And I'll actually get into another player uh, who actually used an Absol and did really well. Like, really, really well. They got 20th in the entire world, so <laughs> I'll be talking about their team. But uh, I'll explain why I think they did a lot better than me. So Absol was mainly just a way to stop Trick Room. I noticed originally I had like a Choice Band Absol and my main issue was I was losing the Trick Room a lot since I didn't have a way to stop it. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna switch to Focus Sash and I'm going to slap Taunt on the Absol and drop Play Rough, uh, which immediately made it a worse Urshifu at that point. But the benefit to dropping Play Rough and adding a Focus Sash to Absol was I moved the Focus Sash over there, meaning that I would actually end up making a bulkier Venusaur, which ended up being the MVP of the entire tournament. I gave it a couple of berry chlorophyll and added, and added weather ball to it over protect. So Venusaur ended up making the matches a lot easier. Uh, Thunderous next to Absol was really cool because if they let off with an intimidate Pokemon, uh, not only did I benefit from that, but uh, I was able to do things like taunt Porygon 2 since P2 plus, um, P2 plus Incineroar was a really common lead. Uh, I was also able to knock off things like Eviolite, or even there was one game where I knocked off a Mental Herb as the Mimikyu set Trick Room, and when it set Trick Room, I reversed the Trick Room with my Porygon 2, and then went for a Taunt on it the next turn to prevent it. So I was able to shut down a Trick Room that way, so yeah, Absol came to a lot of matchups, mainly as just a way to spam Sucker Punch and go for knockoff since it had one free attack. So essentially what I would do is, like, versus... Charizard teams, I would commonly lead off with Absol and Thunderous. And what I could do is actually go for a max Airstream or a max Lightning into either a Sucker Punch or a Knockoff. And either combination of those two moves would KO the Charizard, which is really nice. Uh, especially when Super Luck crit the Charizard with a Knockoff, it would take like upwards of 50 or 60%, which is insane. 
So yeah, Absol was just interesting overall. Thunderous, I ran a Lumberry, mainly as a way to deal with Venusaur Sun, since I was able to always take a uh, Sleep Powder and then go for a Max Airstream to one-shot it. Even versus Venusaur teams that ran Weakness Policy, Thunderous wasn't a bad option just because it dealt so much damage to those things. And I could I could even uh, lead off Thunderous Absol again and just go for a, like a Sucker Punch into a Max Airstream or a Max Airstream into a, a knockoff. Even though, you know, they wouldn't have an item if they were Weakness Policy or Barry, sometimes it was just decent enough. Uh, so yeah, Thunderous ended up coming to mainly just Sun matchups. It was a way to beat the Sun Mirror a little bit easier since my Thunderous is running a Lumberry, where most would be running like an Assault Vest or a Life Orb. I had a White Herb Groudon as well, next to Thunderous. So what I would do is I would actually lead off with Groudon Thunderous in some matchups, and because Intimidate is something that you want to do with Incineroar versus Groudon a lot. You would always want to Intimidate a Groudon. It's a very scary setup Pokemon. Not only did I block an Intimidate, but I benefited from it. So White Herb was really useful since I could pretty much take an Intimidate for free, go down to minus one and then have it be reset, and go for a Swords Dance on that same turn, then go for a Max Airstream with Thunderous and just sweep with plus two P-Blades. That was really nice. Also on occasion, I was actually able to deal with Fake Tears users really well. I faced a couple of Fake Tears plus... Um, max Wormwind Pokemon, and what would end up happening is they would go for the fake tiers onto my Groudon expecting to get a KO, but the wider would reset that, and I would end up being able to KO them with like a, a max Quake or something, so that was really good. Uh, Groudon also is really nice for Venusaur since I could set the sun up for it, and I think that switching uh, to Weather Ball Venusaur is actually a really smart play. Before, my games were pretty inconsistent, and I would end up having to go for a Sleep Powder on Dization to ensure I would win, or even going for a Trick Room uh, and just trying to make sure my Groudon didn't get in range of Behemoth Blade. But after I actually switched to Weather Ball, the Zacian matchup became a lot easier because I had two options for one-shotting it, one being P-Blades or Fire Punch, and the other just being Max Flare off a of Weather Ball. That was a really nice adjustment, and honestly, I think just... Making my Venusaur less of a Sleep Powder user and more of an offensive Pokemon was the, was like an amazing choice. Like I think it was it played out so well, despite the rest of the team you know not performing. Venusaur is always going to be good. Uh, Max Vine Lash dealing one sixth of the opponent's health for four turns is absolutely absurd in this format. Uh, and being able to combo that on top of the damage that you already deal means that you're dealing insane pressure to the rest of the team like for pretty much the majority of the match. Uh, Porygon 2 was really useful for just reversing speed uh, speed tiers or even just reversing a trick room to ensure that I stayed fast. Uh, overall, it was mainly an eerie impulse machine. I found I was bringing P2 to uh, a lot of Calyrex Shadow matchups since Calyrex Shadow plus um, Indeedee is really annoying. I would actually lead off P2 plus Absol and I had a couple of options. I could actually go for a taunt into the Indeedee the first turn and go for the trick room with my Porygon 2 since I could eat the hit pretty well. Uh, and then I would actually just go ahead and uh, start clicking like Eerie Impulse and Recover, click Knock Off and stuff. Um, definitely Indeedee was annoying for Absol because the main matchup it wants to come to is Calyrex Shadow. However, Calyrex Shadow being protected by Psychic Terrain is kind of annoying uh, since I have to take out the Indeedee first or find a way to reset the terrain, which, spoilers, this team has no terrain setters on it except for if Thunderous decides to go for a max, uh, a max uh, Lightning. So yeah, uh, I would say that this guy was really useful mainly for the Kyogre and Calyrex matchups. Groudon being able to eat the hit from Kyogre was actually really nice too. Uh, using a special defensive Groudon next to a Thunderous is really useful since you can pretty easily tank a Water Spout and go for a Max Airstream into Kyogre. And once you tank a Water Spout and get the Max Airstream off, uh, they're at such low health that their Water Spouts aren't really doing much and they're really not dealing too much damage to Groudon, so yeah. It's just general sun stuff. I don't really have to go too in depth with that. You guys know how sun works. Uh, finally, the last Pokemon, uh, the last Pokemon on the team was Glacier, and I found Glacier being kind of underwhelming. I think I could have swapped it out for Charizard and played a lot better, uh, but I wanted a hard Trick Room option. There were a few matchups where Glacier was really nice, but I found missing Icicle Crash was really frustrating. I, I definitely like lost like five, four or five matches due to missing Icicle Crash, which was frustrating to say the least. Uh, however, Glacier was actually nice versus certain Sun matchups. There were some Sun teams that didn't actually bring a uh, Porygon 2 on them. So I was actually able to go for a Trick Room on them and bring Glacier in second. And once that happened, uh, you actually find that many Sun teams don't have a Glacier matchup. Since what you can do is go for an Eerie Impulse onto Charizards, even in the Sun, uh, or when the Sun's up and Trick Room's up. And then you just max Hailstorm into them, deal a ton of damage, remove the sun, and they deal negligible damage to Glacier. Like, yeah, the uh, max 
the max wildfire is going to hurt over time, but a lot of sun teams are pretty glacier weak, so that's something I want to explore in the future. I mean, I guess not really, since there isn't much of a future for the format. It ends in a couple of weeks, but I definitely think glacier was an interesting adaptation to this team, uh, and I would like to try it out again in the future if this format does come back in one form or another. But yeah, um, overall, the team, I think, performed okay. Like, I got a rating of 1574, which I peaked at, like, 1610, I think. Basically, at one point, I had a rating of 1537 because I fell really far from my 1610. And I said, okay, I have seven games left to get this 1537 up to uh, 1650 because that's about where the qualifying mark is. And I got up to, like, 1599 and then lost a match. And I said, all right, well, I only have three games left. There's no way I'm qualifying at that point. So then I just, you know, I tossed in the towel. I'm like, yeah, I literally can't qualify. Uh, but I would say I don't regret using Absol. I just wish I used it differently. And that's what we're going to get into now. There's this player named uh, Flying Falcon 7 on Twitter. And they actually got 20th in the world with Absol. And not only was this like an insane team overall with Kurum White, Reggio Lecky, and uh, just general hyper offensive stuff. But the Absol was running a crit set, which was something that I dismissed initially, but it was actually really cool uh, now that I look at it. So the immense amount of speed control this team has with Transistor <laughs> transistor just dealing major amounts of damage on Regieleki with Electroweb. Not only did you get chip damage on things or even just chunk damage, uh, but you would slow things down and allow for Absol to outspeed things. Stone Edge, Close Combat, Night Slash, Play Rough is actually a really solid set. It includes Play Rough, which is something that uh, Urshfu doesn't get, and I believe Urshfu doesn't get Stone Edge, it might, don't quote me on that, but Absol having 100% crits on Stone Edge meant that this was a Charizard check. With Tailwind Up, this was a Charizard check, and it also made Grimmsnarl players' like lives a nightmare since it was able to just go for crits and hit things through screens, so this is a really cool adaptation. I'm not a fan of Play Rough over Sucker Punch, uh, but I do think that this team did use Absol right, and I just wanted to shout him out. I think this was a really, really cool team, and I really appreciated that there were other people using Absol in the tournament, and people who placed higher than me, so yeah. With that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave a code for the team in the description down below. If you guys want to try it out, I'll make it public for you guys, uh, but I will say that it's still a good team. I think it's a good team. I just didn't play well. I definitely could have qualified, but had some bad matchups, didn't play at 100%. Uh, Absol was kind of underwhelming at times, but I still like the team. I think it's good. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications because I bring you the daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.